Next, let's take a look at using elastic audio to fix a guitar part. For this example, I've got a guitar part that's definitely not hanging with the click. He's just all over the place, and normally you would redo a part like that, but with elastic audio, we can fix it. Let's start out by getting rid of the drums and the guitar or the bass there and just listen to the click and the guitar. You can really hear him speeding up and slowing down. Let's go ahead and turn on elastic audio. We'll do that by clicking on the little double black arrows here and bring up an elastic audio plugin. I think we should choose the monophonic algorithm for this since he's not playing any chords. Once we've done that, nothing really has happened. When we play the file, it's going to sound the same. But in the background, Pro Tools is analyzing the file. Let's switch to analysis view and we can see what Pro Tools has come up with. Here it's placed analysis markers on every transient in the file. These are potential downbeats. And if Pro Tools has done a good job, we should be able to move those right onto the beat and we'll have an on the beat guitar track. Most of the time you don't need to do any more. You can leave this right as it is and Pro Tools will do, do a good job coming up with analysis marker points. But if you have to adjust it yourself, you can go to the region menu and select elastic properties. And then there's an event sensitivity control. As you start to lower that number, the event sensitivity gets lower and lower, maybe 75% there. You can see that Pro Tools has less and less confidence in some of those transients, so it will turn them off. As you move the number up, the lower confidence transients are added to the list, but from my observation, 100% is almost always the way to go. All right, let's switch to Warp View. Warp View is really where the action happens, and in fact, you don't need to look at Analysis View hardly at all because um, you can still see the analysis markers here in Warp View. They're just grayed out now. And if there is trouble with one that's misplaced, um, you can do some fixing in Warp View and not have to go back to the analysis view. We really haven't done anything until we do something like move a region or quantize it. So let's move all the regions and quantize them onto the beat. To do that, I'm going to press Option 0 on Mac or Alt 0 on Windows to bring up the quantize menu. I'm going to select Elastic Audio Events and 16th note, note Grid, and I'm going to hit Apply. Once I do that, Pro Tools has generated warp markers. Warp markers are like analysis markers, except they define where the beat should go. Instead of where it is now, this is where it should go. You can see that they've been placed, and they're equally spaced on the beat. Let's take a listen. <laughs> Wow, considering how bad that guitar part was before, it's pretty much on the click right now. There was one noticeable burble in there though, and it was kind of near the start, so let's zoom in a bit and we can close this quantize window and let's listen. Oh, there it was. We can see it, in fact. If we look at this spot right here, circling with my mouse, there is uh, warp markers on either side, but there's an analysis marker with no warp marker. Somehow in the process of quantizing this uh, section, Pro Tools missed that analysis marker and it never got a warp marker. So we need to assign one and we need to drag that warp marker to the correct beat. How do we know where the correct beat is? Well, that's where uh, grid mode comes in. So let's turn grid mode on and we'll pick a grid resolution that makes some sense, like a 16th. I'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit here. And once we're zoomed in, we can see what we're doing. We've got this grayed out area. I'm going to move the mouse close to the analysis marker. And when I get on top of it, the cursor changes to a new little thing that has an arrow pointed either way and a little plus sign. And that's telling me it's going to add a, a relative warp marker. Relative warp markers are almost always what you want in that they're going to stretch the audio before and squeeze the audio after the marker uh, without moving either of the previous markers. So we've got one before and one after that we like. Those are going to stay. And watch this as I start to move it. As soon as I click, a warp marker is generated. And then as I start to move it, grid mode will do its thing and suck the mouse right in. And it'll snap. And there you can see it. We now have something on the beat. Let's listen. 
it's fixed. That transient is now properly assigned to that beat. Once we've done that, we can listen with the rest of the band, see how it sounds. Well, that's about a thousand times better. Now that we've uh, gone ahead and liked what we've done, we've created something that's on the beat thanks to Elastic Audio. We can click on this uh, Elastic Audio plugin box again. I'm sorry, on the double arrows. You see we have an option for rendered processing. When we're playing a real-time processing monophonic algorithm file there, that's using a bit of CPU. Pro Tools uses the CPU to recalculate the position of each of those warp markers every time you play. And um, if you need to free up CPU for something else, you could select rendered processing. Once you do that, uh, you still have the ability to change things, but the audio is now playing from a newly created continuous file that's in the rendered files folder in your session folder, and we're no longer using CPU to calculate every time we play. Should sound the same though. However, if we try to open this session in an older version of Pro Tools, such as Pro Tools 7.1 or 7.1.0, um, Elastic Audio wasn't even thought of then, and these, set, these regions will open at their original out-of-time length and quantized level. So that guitar would sound just like where we started instead of what it sounds like now. In order to fix that, we need to convert this into a single file with no more elastic audio on it. So what we could do is we can select None from this menu, Disable Elastic Audio. And then a box pops up that says, do you want to revert back to the way it was before? Or... Do you want to commit this Elastic Audio work to a new continuous file? Yes, we do. We'll hit commit, and now you can see we've got one continuous file that looks like we actually had a better guitar player. That's how it works.